Hey everybody, Ronaldo Wofferman here with our Chaos Media Master video tutorials. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the overall interface, which I kind of covered that in the last video. Make sure you guys click here if you haven't uh, seen that video yet. But I just want to show you how to load videos and basically how to get started right away. Now, I of course, I usually have a second display hooked up. In this case, we didn't. So we're going to be using this part of the screen here so you can see it. I'm going to go ahead and first of all, we're going to go into preferences because when you have a second video screen, you want to go ahead and tell Media Master, hey, I've got a second screen. So in your full screen display, you would click this and it's going to show you, if you have only one screen, it's going to show you three options. One would be your current monitor. And if you do that, it's going to pop up on that monitor, as you'll see in just a second. Your second would be your secondary display. And then three would allow you to have it in both. So if you want to have it like I'm having right here, where I have Media Master off to one side and you actually want to see the output, you could do that if you wanted to. Of course, I kept my resolution low just for the sake of this video. Uh, we'll go into geometric correction and all that later, but right now, again, I just want to keep the video simple. We're going to go to full screen it, and it's really, really basic the way that it works. You see, Media Master can be done as drag and drop, or you can prepare your library. And we'll talk about the library in another video as far as preparing, migrating it, being able to use it instantly in another computer. Uh, for now, we're going to talk about the drag and drop method. See, it's super simple. So basically we have, uh, you see the folders that I made here, and the folders are from 0 to 255. And you can't add any more than that because it's basically made to be recalled from your DMX value. So if you're using DMX, you would have one fader that goes from 0 to 255, so you can select a different folder and obviously within the folder you would have your individual banks of scenes and so forth you could literally take a video and drag and drop it so for example let me just leave this for a second let's say this video here that I have okay it's from one of my events can't just drag and drop it into that I have to go into a folder now in this case I'll just choose my what I call branding and normal stuff meaning just stuff that I use every day or that I would use for that specific event now we just drag and drop it this here tells me that it's loading. Oh, there it is, instantly. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in full screen. Hmm, there it goes, super easy. Now I see right away that this doesn't look quite the way it should. Ah, because mixing is on remove white. So we're just gonna have it on replace. And it just basically means that as I load a video in, so let's say we have this video in, now we're gonna load this guy. It just replaces it gradually. Now, there's a few different options. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. We have multiplication. And if this looks familiar and you've done Photoshop, it works pretty much the exact same way. We've got our additive color. We've got our subtracting color. And I'll be honest with you, this looks really cool with live video when you put one on top of the other. Remove black and remove white is great for text, especially if you're doing an event and they give you a logo. Easy way to remove it. Instant is very similar to replace, except when you are doing this through DMX or if you're doing an autofade of any kind, it automatically goes up. There is no gradual movement. So whenever I want a nice gradual movement, I do replace. Uh, you can also see how instant works right here. See, I'm going to select my latch mode here. So I'm going to select, I'm going to hit W. You can see right there, that's instant. If I do replace, it's a little bit slower. If I want it to, and of course, if it's DMX, it's manual for that. Or if I want it to be where I just hit W and it looks like a gradual fade, or whatever the key may be that I assigned, there it is. Nice and slow. And this is great if you're going to be doing a uh, presentation or you're going to be using this in some sort of, let's say, for example, corporate setting or club setting. You don't have a MIDI controller, just your keyboard. Much easier way of doing this. I also have done this for mobile events or even rentals where I need to dummy proof it for a lack of better words, and I tell them, look, you hit this button for this cue, this button for this cue. Everybody knows how to use a keyboard, so it's fairly easy. And then, of course, you have your color mixing options, where it's red, green, blue, uh, dark room, you know. It's kind of hard to describe how it does, but I'm sure you can kind of tell. And then, of course, tiled. Now, for the tiled, you can go and you can add different number of tiles, okay? or I can add it here. So let's say I'm going to do tiling right there. 
and I can assign a DMX channel and a MIDI value if I need to. We're going to leave DMX alone. Uh, yes, we're going to leave it. Like basically, I just told it, yeah, I'm going to save it. And now, right here, it's automatically turned into tile. So it's just a really neat way of being able to have a lot of fun with that. Now you'll see that if I go into this one, I move this, it doesn't do tiling at all. It does movie speed. So each individual layer that I'm setting here can have its own individual settings, which makes programming quite a bit of fun because you can have each layer for different things. So for example, I could have my first layer be the text or logo that I'm going to put on top. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go here. There's my DJ logo. Now I wanted to remove black. So first of all, I'm going to, if I were to remove black, I'm going to have this here. And the first thing that I notice is that my logo isn't really quite working. Why is that? Well, because we have our priorities changed differently. So if I click here, I'm going to have this on normal, not on foreground. Then move this to the foreground, bring this down, bring it back up. And there it is. So I have to remove black or I can choose again a lot of different options okay but for now we're gonna do remove black and I'm gonna to go to edit because I need to change the location now there's a whole bunch of them here I could do for example bottom left so I'm gonna start with that but I'm gonna make it go in the oops other direction we're gonna do the position Z which basically zooms in and zooms out I could do the height and width, but I don't want to do that. Unless it's all the way there and then I need to. Then in that case, I would just resize it and position it, whatever I need to do there. Okay, then of course, if I want to rotate it a little bit, I can do that. I can even have it auto rotate, which is pretty neat. So again, this is a great way, instead of, you know, having to take a logo importing it into After Effects, doing this, and then loading it in. I can just have this do it for me automatically. Again, just something really cool, really unique. I'm going to have it like that, have my logo spinning. Okay, now I'm going to call this logo. Now we save it. But I'm going to go ahead and bring this down. Oops. And what I want to do is, actually, and this doesn't have to be an order of the layer. So, for example, I can go into here. And I'm going to put this again in my foreground. And I'm going to remove white. So I can do something like that if I felt like it. I'm going to go into my text. And I put all my text in an individual layer or individual scene, if that makes sense. Or, excuse me, individual bank of folders. Okay, so we have that. And we are going to change the text. So I'm just going to, well, it should let me, maybe because I'm playing with the full screen here. So we're going to go into our text management. There it is right there. And DJ Crazy Ace hashtag. Okay, so let's say that, you know, whether I'm the DJ or somebody else is a DJ, whatever the case may be, I'm going to go here. It's like my hashtag DJ Crazy Ace. And I'm going to go ahead and just to start it with, I'm going to put it on logo. It's pretty much right there. So I'm going to go to edit. Okay. We're going to shut off that auto rotate, bring it back down to zero, bring the rotation Z to zero. Okay. And we are going to uh, let's see. Okay, there it is right there. And then I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Perfect. And right there. And we're just going to call it logo text. Okay. So we have that. And then we're going to leave it like it is. Now I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to edit this up a little bit. We're just going to move this guy up. I don't want it all the way down. Now with the auto rotate, this becomes the speed, which is pretty obvious. 
and we're going to save it. Presets have not been modified. Everything is saved. No, I don't want to discard it. So I'm just going to save it. Yes. Okay. Click OK. And there it is right there. So that's pretty easy. Of course, I can take my tiling down, and then I can bring something else if I want to. So if I'm just going to have a regular loop, I can do that. I can mess with the different subtraction methods. So I can tile my logo if I want to. I don't know why the heck I'd want to do that. Or I can just do dark so the black still stays on there as far as in my name and everything else. And it, I bet it's a little bit more opaque or transparent. Now, background kind of works in the same way, right? So I'm going to go ahead and set these are in the foreground, foreground. I'm going to have a video that just goes in the background, okay? And this is great to have just something in between. So I'm going to bring this up. When I bring that down, there it is there. Every time I bring that up, this is always on top. So now if I want to change this one into another visual, all right, so let's say we're going to go here. And then now all of a sudden there's like a club anthem. I can bring that down, but I can bring this up and down or bring this and not have this as I move it up and down affect the first one. So if I go here to where it says now normal, so it's in the same priority as that, I bring this down and bring it back up, it mixes it. And of course, some remove black. If I do replace, it automatically replaces it. If I don't want one to replace the other, then I just set one as the background. And then when I bring this down, there it is there. So I'm going to change that visual. Let's say over here, I'm going to bring that up, change this visual if I need to. Let's say I go into this weird guy looking over here, bring it down, and there you go. Now, let's say I want to change my text again. The beauty of it is that I can change my text and not have it delete the text that I wrote in. And this is one of the things that I like Media Master, the way it handles it much better than Grand VJ, is that the text does not get erased every time I make a change because there's a text manager so I can have everything quickly uh, accessible, recall from DMX, whatever the case may be. So there it is right there. I can have that. Or I can just go into this here. A lot of different options. That's not a very good font for the hashtag. You just kind of got to play around with it. And there you go. Again, just something unique, something simple, every, simple, every single time. Uh, now, of course, this is the preview for ClingNet because it's doing all outputs because I can do all outputs. Full screen display, which is the monitor, or ClingNet. So you'll see that on the ClingNet, the text suddenly disappeared. If I go into full screen display, there's that because, again, it's set to all outputs. But if I take my logo and I only have logo coming out of, actually, let's say here I have this coming out of ClingNet, okay? Now it disappears because this was told to be played only through a ClingNet display. Um, so I'd have to switch here to ClingNet if I want to see that. So I hope that helps out a little bit. If you guys have any questions, please make sure to ask away, subscribe, put anything in the comments. And thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, again, leave a comment. Thank you so much. Good night and God bless.